welcome to another episode here from the Off Grid Garage in sunny hot Australia. We've got 49 amps outside. We really have this um, cloud edge situation now when clouds moving away from the sun and then it comes out all of a sudden and we see spikes up to 55, 60 amps now. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Well, in today's video, I want to just pick up on the last video I made in regards to the um, changed charge setting settings for lithium iron phosphate batteries. And to show you, regardless what voltage you charge to, you almost always end up with 99% state of charge. Yesterday, with the initial calibration of our smart shunt at real 100% state of charge, we have seen it dropped only to 99.5% when we hit the absorption voltage of 3.45. And uh, yesterday I was at work, so I could only do a little bit of video in my lunch break then. I monitored the situation via the Victron VRM and could see the battery is charging up quickly to 3.45 per cell. And when it was hitting the absorption voltage, ah oh well, have a look by yourself. Well, it is now the next day and we are just hit the 90% mark state of charge. And we know after yesterday's calibration, 100% is 100%. So if you want to charge to 90%, we should stop right now. And this is exactly... If we go to the other screen here. This is exactly 28 ampere hours less than full capacity. Okay, let's wait until we hit the... Um, uh, three point, what is it? 55.2 volts. And then we have another look how much ampere hours we have left until zero. And this gives us the percentage we are charging to. I think we will be close. Thanks truck. I think we will be close to 99% then at this point of time. Shouldn't take long. Sunny hot, 42 amps outside. So we are now at 95% state of charge, 14.4, uh, 14 ampere hours to go. What I like is the voltage has not changed, 54.6 volts still, and 55.2 will be our maximum when we start absorbing. 3.45 seems to be the ideal charging voltage. Okay, we have now just hit the 55.2 volts. We can see the solar charge controllers go into absorption mode now. Still supplying the load and keeping the battery voltage on 55.2. Current is tapering off. So once we hit the absorption voltage, we are already 98.5 charged. And it will show us we have 4.4 ampere hours left until we hit real 100% state of charge. It's still charging with 27 amps. So let's see, when this one goes to zero, how close we come to 100% state of charge. We are absorbing for 15 minutes. That's the setting in the solar charge controllers now. So we should see, yep, they are both in absorption mode. And you could see here the voltage now. Yes, that's the battery voltage. Going from 53.2 overnight to 54.8 only. So this is only 1.6 volts overall pack voltage difference between 65% it was this morning to almost 100% now. Only 1.6 volts. There, yeah, 3.9. Missing until 100% state of charge. Okay, let's get this down to zero here and then we see what's going on. So, well, as you could see from the screen recording, we just switched to float mode now. So the battery gets discharged slightly until we hit the 53.6 volts, which is a 3.35. And you could see, well, we're getting to 99.5%. There is only 1.4 ampere hour missing until real 100%. This is how high you charge if you go to 3.45 volts and absorb for 15 minutes. So does it make sense to absorb? Absolutely not. You're gaining 
0.3% in capacity, keeping the battery on 3.45 um, volts, and that's it. There's no gain in capacity at all absorbing at this voltage or even charging higher. We have perfectly fine charged the battery to 3.45 volts with full speed. There was no throttling before. I'm getting the impression it is not worth charging any higher at all. Because A, this gives you 99.5% already of capacity, of real capacity, and it also charges with full speed. So there's no throttling or something at this voltage at all. All right, guys, so far this update, I'll try again tomorrow and we see if we can repeat this. If this is a consistent charging to 99.5% now, that would be ridiculous, right? Okay, see you tomorrow. Yeah, this was yesterday and we could see charging the battery up from 70% or something up to 99.5% and then it stops. This is at 3.45 volts. So there is no way we can charge to 90% at any time. There, There's no indicator. There's no voltage setting for that. And we can now see we are at 95% state of charge. 15.3 ampere hours are missing until real 100% state of charge, 3.65 volts then. So only 15 ampere hours are missing. We are already at 95% and still charging with 52 amps. Holy cow. And again, I have turned off all the loads here. Inverter is off. Everything is turned off because I want to hit the absorption voltage hard. With the maximum charge current we can get. And today is a very good day to test this actually out here. So I'm keen to see what happens when we hit the 55.2 volt. So at the moment, even charging with 52 amps, we can see we are still having 54.8 volts on only. So the voltage is not peaking. The cells are still absorbing a lot of energy. And we are still in the relatively flat area of the curve now. But as soon as this voltage starts rising now, we are going into the steeper area of the curve. And then we hit very quickly 55.2 and then we stop charging. I still have the 15 minute absorption time in there just in case we have one of these uh, scenarios like now when we have these these uh, cloud edges. The sun is peeking out behind the cloud all of a sudden and you get a really peak in charge voltage. You could hit the absorption voltage just for a short moment before the cloud comes back and then you would be in absorption voltage already and the timer starts running then. That's why I have set a short time period for absorbing of 15 minutes only. And we also should have a look at the BMS, of course, because I couldn't do this yesterday. 52 amps and 22 millivolt deviation across the whole pack. Eight is slow, six is high, two is high. Flex between these two, totally fine. And this high charge current, that is super, super good. Okay, I would say we give it another <laughs> three, four minutes and then we should see well, it's insane today. It's insane. 52 amps going in. And here we can also see the shunt measuring the ampere hours going into the battery now. It claims we are at 266.2 at the moment. So there's only 18 ampere hours missing as per the BMS shunt, while the Victron calculates 11 ampere hours are missing. I don't know which one is more precise. We don't know. They both started at 100% calibrated to 3.65 volts yesterday, the day before yesterday, counting amps in and out, but they are now in a different state. So which one is correct? We don't know. The only thing I can see is here. This one is actually jumping back again. So sometimes it charged to a, a certain value and then it jumps back like half an amp hour again because it somehow realizes this is not true or something. I don't know. Let's see if we can. Yeah, there it was just there. It jumped from 42 or something back to zero and now starts again counting. I think it's waiting for the voltage to catch up or something. It may do a combination of voltage and ampere hours going in and out to calculate all that. Who knows? Yeah, now we've got clouds. Yeah, small cloud coming. And when this one is going away, the sun is coming out all of a sudden panels have cooled down and then we see this cloud corner edge situation where we have a huge spike in voltage and amps. 55 I have seen for a few seconds already. 
and you can see if the clouds are coming the voltage is still dropping so we are still not the the batteries have still not absorbed enough energy to hold the voltage actually and this is at um well this is at 97 percent right and again, since we did the calibration two days ago, the balancer did not kick in because the balancer of the BMS is now set to 3.64 or something, really, really high state of charge of the battery when it kicks in. And the active balancer is not even connected and there's no other balancing happening and we still have only 23 millivolt, 22 millivolt deviation across the pack. And I've used it for two days now. So this is pretty good. No balancing at all, right? Yeah, if you would charge only to 3.4 volts, this would mean 54.4 volts. Probably this would be another test to charge only to 3.4 volts and see how much, at what kind of state of charge we are then. And then play with the, uh, with the absorption time a little bit and see if we need to change this. But if we charge to 95% or something, I would not absorb anymore at all i would just call it done another positive another positive side if you charge to a lower voltage is if you have these bike if you have these spikes cloud corner edge situation the voltage of your battery will not move regardless how much amps you pump into the battery it will not move because we are still in the flat area of the curve then and you, you can you can pump half a C into the battery, the voltage will not change. Or not by much. Yeah, the Smart Chant claims 97% and the BMS claims 96% there. It is now increasing the ampere hours here as well. We are almost at 270. 28 millivolt we are 55.1 so we now can see an increase in voltage here as well there it is 55.04 and you probably can see this increasing now slowly we start charging with 48 amps still there is a lot of current coming in see this one measures 48.3 amps and this one measures 50 amps here so which one is correct right We've got two smart chunks in series, so they should measure the same, but which one is correct? Do you trust the Chinese one or the Victron one? I would say the Victron one is more accurate. Okay, I just turned off the camera and now we have hit 55.2 um, volts all of a sudden and I think the current will taper off. We just hit absorption voltage. We are at 98%. Um, let's have a quick look here in the... Yeah, it's on absorption. So, so we have now hit the 55.2 volts and now it keeps the voltage constant and still absorbs. We are still charging with 2.5 kilowatts into the system. So 5.2 ampere hours missing until 100%. So let's wait the 15 minutes and see what we come up with after the absorption time before it goes into float. Still charging with 40 amps into the battery. Insane. Here in the BMS you can see we are still charging with 16 amps, 55.2 volts. We've got 58 millivolt deviation now across the pack here. So you can see there's still deviation happening here when we charge it up, but because we don't go higher than 55.2, it stays limited to only these 50 millivolts now. And I think when I change the charging settings to 3.4 volts only and give it time to absorb, we won't see that much deviation anymore. And then we don't need to worry that one cell will run off or something and trigger the BMS to turn off. Because it just won't happen anymore. We are so low in voltage then, it won't happen. And we will still charge to 99% then. That is the incredible stuff with lithium iron phosphate. Yeah, I just want to wait until this one goes to float to see what, what charge we have. But we are again at the same situation as yesterday, 99.3, 99.5. See, we are two ampere hours less than 280. You're always charging to 99%. Well, I've just turned on the irrigation pump. It's running with 800 watts now from the AC load here. And this power purely comes from the solar panels directly. And we're still charging the battery with 8.8 .8 amps here, absorbing, but we are at 99.3% already. And now we have reached 99.5% state of charge again. 
still charging with 3.5 amps so the battery is fully absorbed at this voltage and again we've got 1.6 ampere hours missing until real 100% state of charge and if we go into the BMS now we can see only 40 millivolt of deviation 38 so it's going down right now all right just in this second it changed from oh it's back to absorption I'm sure it was on float just now I think it actually is the uh, hang on let me refresh the page here because we are discharging the battery now it has lowered the voltage just the little sign here hasn't updated yeah that's on float now okay let's quickly check in the advanced tab yeah 1.5 ampere hours 99.5 percent state of charge 1.5 ampere hours missing to real 100 percent plus minus a bit of drift of the smart shunt of course okay guys in the next video i would like to change the settings of the mppt solar charge controllers from 3.45 to 3.4 volts only and see if we get similar results than this one because this would mean we can still charge with full speed into the battery and we're still getting the 99 percent state of charge anyway so why would you go higher then and I would also like to observe the balance deviation across all the 16 cells. Is this lower than the 60 millivolt we just saw here at peak time? Will it be lower because we are in a because then we are again in the flatter area of the curve? Let's find out. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, all your donations. They are very much appreciated and help and help me making this content here. And until the next video, please stay charged and safe. And thank you so much again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.